I'm Paul Schultz. I just want to welcome you here to Southern Hills and share a few things that's going on with our small groups. On Monday, the men's group is meeting at 7.30 in my driveway. We're discussing the book of John. If you have an interest of learning more about it, feel free to contact me or the church office and they'll get you the information. Wednesday, the men's breakfast is meeting across the street at the park from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Bring your own coffee and breakfast. Wednesday, the ladies' Bible group uh, they are meeting at 10 a.m. outside of the church uh, in the prayer garden. Bring your own lawn chairs. And Sunday nights with the women's group, um, they'll be starting up again this fall and the topic and location uh, to be decided yet. Also, just kind of want to share with you, too, if, if you have an interest in leading a small group, uh, feel free to reach out to the church office, Pastor Don or myself, and we'll help you get going. Like I said, that small groups a place to be it's just a good intimate place to learn about one another and, and get some good topics and discussion going so again thank you for allowing me to share the time here with you and have a great day
darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here.
Hey, good Sunday morning, everybody. This is Pastor Don. I am the pastor here at Southern Hills, and I want to welcome you into the life of this service today. If you are new or visiting our online service for the first time, I want to specifically welcome you into the life of this church today. It is my prayer that you would find a home here on Sunday mornings. I want to thank Mike Vandervorst. He is uh, not only the chair of our finance committee, but he is so active on our praise and worship team. Uh, he, he's also a fantastic preacher. And for the last two Sundays, Mike Vandervorst has been bringing us the word of God. Thank you, Mike, for those messages. I know I have grown closer to Jesus because of them. Thank you for your words of grace and encouragement and uh, for bringing me and this church closer to Jesus. Two weeks ago, to where we are today is filled with many emotions. A lot of those emotions I share with you as we wished Pastor Justin and his family a last goodbye here at Southern Hills. Pastor Justin is off starting a new chapter of ministry at Hilltop United Methodist Church down the street. Even today, right now, uh, in the next half hour, he's going to be preaching his first sermon uh, to Hilltop. So we, we, we join Justin in celebrating with him and we ask God uh, to bless him and his, and his new ministry. Uh, I'm excited for him and his family and what he's going to bring to Hilltop. I know God is, is going to bless him during this uh, part of his next chapter of ministry. And with that, friends, I ask that you would continue to lift him up in your prayers as he begins pouring into that congregation as he has poured into us here at Southern Hills. Pastor Justin and I said our last goodbyes at Flandreau uh, two weeks ago, which was not easy. And, and I'll tell you why it's never easy to say goodbye. Um, it's because as pastors, we give you our hearts. We give you everything we have, not only on Sunday mornings, but each day of the week. We constantly lift you up in our prayers. And we ask God to bless you and bring you closer to him. Pastor Justin is one of my closest friends, and I'm so thankful he isn't too far away. And, and now, now, here's the cool thing, friends. Pastor Justin and I, we've already talked and made plans to bring the churches together to do service projects together, to do worship services together, to do things together with our youth group. And, and, and friends, the reality is that's the, that's the way church and ministry is supposed to be. For some reason, I don't know when this happened, but there always, to see, there always seems to be this church versus church thing, right? My church is better than your church. My pastor is better than your pastor. We got better music over here. You got better music over there. And because of that notion, unfortunately, that has kept churches from doing a lot of things together. I've always said people are stronger when they are together. I believe that is the same way for the church, too. Churches are stronger when churches come together. The transitions we make in life are very hard and sometimes difficult. Saying goodbye to a pastor you loved is a tough thing to do. I share that feeling with you today. I share that feeling with you. Looking back, it truly feels like it was just yesterday that Pastor Justin and I moved into this very office right now. And, and, and when we moved in together, we, we prayed hard and, and we asked God to, to give us a ministry plan for Southern Hills. The three years of ministry together went by so fast. And as my family begins our fourth year of ministry with you, we are excited for all the great things God is going to do at Southern Hills. Before Pastor Justin and Sarah had baby Judah, we, we planned to get the whole month of May done so Pastor Justin could enjoy that, that family time and not have to worry about doing all the editing and uploading like he had been doing up until uh, Laura, who's, who's done a fantastic job uh, taking over the, the online editing and uploading and, and bringing the music from the, tra from the, from the praise team and, and from the mixing that Trevor does. And, and so, so when, when April was around, we wanted to get done our messages so that May could be just a relaxing time, not only for, for Pastor Justin, but so I could start doing some planning here for what the summer would look like at, at Southern Hills. When we wrote our messages for May in the month of April, I was talking with Christy uh, one night, and I, was asked, I asked her, Christy, what, what do you think would be great, uh, a great series um, after the 4th of July? And, and after some thinking, she said, well, do something on parenting. 
do something on parenting. So friends, for the next several weeks, we are going to be talking about parenting hacks that can save your life. The series is called Parenting Hacks That Can Save Your Life. It doesn't matter if you're a mom, a dad, a grandma, a grandpa, an aunt, and uncle. We all have kids around us one way, form, or another. We're all moms and dads to some kid. We're all aunts and uncles uncles to some kids. So, so this series is for you. It's for anybody. It's called Parenting Hacks That Will, ch- that will Change Your Life. As we're about to dive into this series, I want to pause for a moment, if I could. Last weekend, we celebrated America's birthday. In 1776, we gained our our freedom from a tyrant leader. We gained our freedom from a tyrant country in Britain. And for the last 244 years, we celebrate that freedom on the 4th of July. We celebrate the men and women who have sacrificed their lives so that you and I can enjoy the freedoms that we have this very day. So that we can enjoy the things that that we do, that we love to do uh, this very day. We celebrate and remember those men and women who who, who, who have sacrificed their lives and those men and women who continue to serve so that we can enjoy freedom. We're enjoying one of those freedoms right now, the freedom to worship, the freedom to worship without persecution of all the freedoms we have in this world and in this life and in this country, the ability to worship in the church or online like we're doing. The ability to to talk about Jesus and to spread the good news of Jesus to whoever we want or, 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 or whenever we want and not have to worry about being persecuted for it. We thank the men and women who protect those freedoms so that we can praise Jesus without persecution. All of us know in different parts of the world, even right now as we speak, there are Christians who are worshiping illegally because of their government's view on Christianity. Here, we don't have that worry. And because of that, join me in giving thanks for those who have protected and those who continue to protect those freedoms that we have. Last weekend, we celebrated the birth of our country. And today, like every Sunday, we also celebrate the coming together as the body of Christ. For one hour each week, we gather, whether it's in person, in the parking lot, like we're doing, or online, like you are right now, with whether it's by yourself or, or with your spouse or your family or your grandchildren. We gather to, to, to grow in our faith. We use this time to grow closer to God, to learn from one another, to lean on one another, to be encouraged in our walk with Jesus. This series that we're doing today is called Parenting Hacks That Will Change Your Life. When our city was in lockdown for for March and April and the better part of May, I learned quickly how much patience I don't have and how much patience my wife does. Christy, my wife, is a rock star when it comes to parenting. In the midst of her answering questions, she's a teacher, Uh, a third grade teacher, and in the midst of her preparing her learning boards for her class and answering parent questions through email and text and all that, right? She's pouring into our own children, Madison and Hudson, and helping them with the bulk of their school learning. Each day when the kids did their learning boards, I helped them as much as I could. I do admit it was very difficult me it was very difficult for me to motivate myself to think like a kid. Now, I know I, I, I wasn't that patient trying to figure out their boards. Actually, it was Hudson's board who, who it was kind of my responsibility to help him out as much as I could. And, and I also learned that my cognitive level of what my kids are doing in school right now, it shuts down right about the first grade because some of Maddie's stuff that she was doing, it amazed me about all that. All the things that I didn't have a clue what I was supposed to do to help, to help her learn. I thank God for teachers. <laughs> My wife's one of them, and I thank the Lord for our education system. Uh, and, and just all the hard work that went into those uh, learning boards, right, that the kids had to do each day. Parenting church, it's the hardest job in the world. And sometimes I'm just not good at it at all. 
When Christy and I brought Madison into the world, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Sometimes I still don't have a clue what I'm doing as a dad. It got a little easier when Hudson came along. I became a diaper pro when our third 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 child came along, Callan. Uh, changing poopy diapers. I am a pro at it right now, friends. It almost become uh, second hand. It's like I've been doing it my whole life. After the diapers, and hear me now, parents and grandparents, did you know that we have the responsibility of actually keeping kids alive? <laughs> they require food. Who knew, right? And they eat a lot of it. They require milk. They require water. They, re they have to stay hydrated. They, you, you, you have to tell them to, to quiet down. You have to tell them to, to pick this up and throw that away and don't touch that. Don't put that in your mouth. Put that back. And then, parents, there's this word that's spelled out, N-O. It, it, it's, it's called no, right? Kids everywhere don't understand that word. It's like when you say that word no, you're speaking to, to kids and teenagers in a different language. And, and then there's the car rides, right? How many of you love car rides with children or teenagers, right? When they're sitting right next to each other. Now give me a show of hands or maybe that heart emoji on this uh, chat that we have featured here in this online format uh, of an argument you may have had with your own children or grandchildren sometime this weekend in a car because they were fighting over some kind of toy or, or device or, or whose window is down further than the others. It happens. It happens, right? Now, this isn't my kids. <laughs> wink, wink. But what if... Actually, not what if. But wouldn't it be great if the companies that made cars put one of those open, uh, open and closable walls, right? Right behind mom and dad like they do in limos, right? I mean, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be just the, an amazing uh, tool for parents? A soundproof wall to allow you not to worry and stress about what's going on behind you because you can't hear a thing because you got that wall up, right? Now, if anyone wants to go ahead and invent that, I ask that you would remember your pastor and, and, and give him a 1% royalty on everyone that's purchased in the United States of America. Parenting church, I don't have a clue. I know my parents kept me alive long enough for me to make my own personal decisions. And one of the best ones I made was marrying my wife, my best friend. My wife will do anything for our children. She's the best parent I know. I learn more from my wife more than anyone else because our kids come first. She puts our children first. Sometimes I'm not always great at that. Children are a blessing. And to be honest, you really do learn as you go. There is no one size fits all when it comes to parenting. In our scripture today, Paul He's writing a letter to Timothy, and Timothy, he's at this church called, in Ephesus, in a town called Ephesus, and he's speaking to counter false teaching to straighten it out. So let's hang out together, friends, today in 1 Timothy 3, 14 through 16. This is what the scripture says. Although I hope to come to you soon, I am writing you these instructions <clears throat> so that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God. The pillar and the foundation of truth beyond all question, the mystery from which true godliness springs is great. He appeared in the flesh, talking about Jesus now, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up in the glory, the word of the Lord. Timothy, friends, he is a young leader. And, and the uh, Apostle Paul, if you remember Paul, right, he's responsible for a lot of the New Testament books that we read. And Paul, he, he poured in to Timothy. He was a partner in ministry. As a parent, one of the only things I care about for my kids to remember me when I go home, when God calls me home, is that one of the things I, I want my kids to remember me by is by my faith and my walk with Jesus. And how important church is and, and how important Sunday mornings are. 
you can see Paul's heart in this letter. Paul says again, please listen to this. I am writing these instructions so that if I am delayed, you will know how people, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves. <clears throat> In God's household, which is the church of the living God, the foundation of truth. Friends, we are talking about the church. We're talking about conduct and how we are in and outside the church. I know sometimes I completely blow it as a dad. And other times I'd like to think I'm modeling to my children what someone who follows Jesus is supposed to look like. The times I bomb it, they are always my fault because everything becomes about me and my wants and my desires. And the times I get it right, it does nothing but create a warm spot in my heart that I'm making a difference in my kids' lives. Did you know that for $3.19, you can get a parenting guide for dummies on eBay. And to take it one further, for $7.48, you can get the complete idiot's guide of parenting a teenager. Does anyone have those books, right? You've probably seen them in the library or, or online. Now, I'm just curious if you have those books, were they helpful? In my family, we're not quite in the teenage years yet, but I'm glad it's not going to cost me more than eight bucks to figure out how to parent a teenager. Because parenting is the hardest job in the world, it's also the best job in the world. I love being a dad to all the kids listening, to all the kids and teenagers listening. And maybe you're a grown-up right now. You're still a kid, right, to your parents if they're still alive. Parents, kids, especially kids right now, your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, they have the best job in the world when they became your parents and grandparents. In our scripture, Paul is writing to Timothy, and, and Timothy, he, he gets the guidelines on conduct in the church, and just like parenting, right, everyone you will ever meet in this life will give you their two cents on how they think you should raise your kids and how they think your kids should behave. Everywhere we go, whether we have kids at home or not, we live in a world where people give us advice, sometimes when we don't even want it. They give advice on parenting, on jobs, on money, on choices, on, on marriage, on family and religion and politics. And they also give advice and, and they tell you, you know, what they think about the church and how people should conduct themselves in the church. I want to share a little commentary, friends, because this passage is so fitting to our series. Listen to this. Commentary says the Bible, now please hear me, Tal. Please, please, please hear me now. The Bible is the written form of what God expects us to know and do. Commentary goes on to say, God chose Paul to, to carry out one phase of the plan. Through Paul, the inspired teaching was written down and it was passed on to Timothy. Then it was passed on to others. Then it was passed on to you and I, right? Times have changed. But listen to this, friends. The original authority of Scripture remains. Because the Bible is from God, it must be studied seriously, understood thoroughly, and applied faithfully. As God's children, church, we have the ability to, to read God's word every day and to spread God's word every day. Now, believe me, there is a lot of stuff in the scripture I struggle with. And the things I struggle with that challenge me, they challenge me. But regardless of the stuff I struggle with, this is God's word for our lives. It's a love letter written for you and I, not only to read and share. Of all the books you and I could ever read on parenting and grandparenting and how to succeed in life, none of them, none of them will ever compare to what we read in the scriptures. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, young adults, teens, kids, keep these scriptures close to your heart. Invite Jesus while you read them. What's written in here will never leave you astray. They will never lead you astray. 
and they will draw you closer to Jesus each time you read them. Parenting, how do you do it, right? How, how do you do it? That's the big question. Everyone has an answer. You can read books on it. You can get talk to the moon and back about it. You can argue about how to do it. You may get a lot of answers. You may get few. But one thing I do know is this. I cannot be a parent without Jesus. We cannot be parents without Jesus. We cannot be grandparents without Jesus. We can try. We can try to do it without Jesus. It's going to be hard if we do. But with Jesus, everything is possible. I know I may not always get it right. But without Jesus, I would be lost. And I guarantee, I guarantee as you raise your children and grandchildren, you would be lost too without Jesus. And we're going to talk more about that next week as we dive into this series. Thanks for joining us today. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. A day that you have given us to draw closer to you. A day that we give you all honor and glory. A day that we desire to know you more. And maybe, God, we don't have kids at home anymore. Maybe we got kids living in a different part of the city or the state or another state, or we got grandkids all over the country. Maybe we don't have kids yet, but we're an aunt or an uncle. Lord, we're all parents. We're all modeling how we follow Jesus to children who are watching us. God, forgive us when we struggle. Give us strength each day to put on Christ, to show him wherever we go. Lord, thank you for this day. Amen and amen. Well, friends, it's been an honor joining you today. Join us next week, 9 o'clock, right here, and let's worship again together. God bless. Bye.